I also believe in sales that great salespeople tell at the end of sales instead of ask. Most people, they tell the whole time and then they ask at the end. I believe in asking along through the sale and then telling at the end. It's kind of reverse of how a lot of people believe to do sales, but at the end, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really asking. I'm just like, hey, this is what you need to do. We have a good relationship. This makes sense. It covers everything you want it to. And you obviously need it. So let's get it started right now, right? Like it ain't, it ain't, it ain't complicated and don't have to be either. Back to the Rising Stars podcast. I'm excited to go through and continue our book series on zero to six figures. We've went through the first three chapters. Today's all about closing, which is chapter four, closing the deal now. Here's what I want you thinking about as we walk through this and I read through this, okay? I want you to think about the current way that you're setting up a cell. I want you to think about how you're asking questions, what words you're saying when you're asking questions? Are you being assumptive with urgency? Or are you just okay if nobody ever buys from you and everybody thinks about it and calls you back? Uh, there's, a, there's a part of this that's not probably not in the book. Uh, maybe, maybe some of it's in the book um, about how Brian Tracy years ago was training a sales staff on closing. And everybody, like, and, and he always got the objection. I always want to think about it. I want you to call me back. I'm not going to make a decision today, whatever. And then he finally started telling people, you know, he started using his no callback clothes um, and it really started to push the envelope and the needle and he started to get people to buy then or at least make the decision then, right? Which is really important. So you're, you're doing sales and you're getting in front of people to help them uh, do something, right? Decide whether they want to buy insurance or not. Like a, a no is not as good as a yes, frankly, it's just not, but it's better than a maybe that you never hear back about, that you think about. It's like you have all these open tabs in your brain. Sometimes you need to close some of them, you know? And so I, I when I sell, I, I have extreme urgency. Um, I mean, I'll give you an example. This is a real life example, straight from my cell phone this earlier today, that um, I, I sent somebody a text. I said, I got a big idea. We all want you involved. Call me ASAP. It's the most epic thing we've ever put together. And I've got to know today. Well, does that create urgency or does that create urgency? Okay, a little extreme. It's a different scenario. You can't, I'm not saying you can always do that. But when we're going through this, I want you to think about how you can handle these things differently. I also believe in sales that great salespeople tell at the end of sales instead of ask. Most people, they tell the whole time and then they ask at the end. I believe in asking along through the sale and then telling at the end kind of reverse of how a lot of people believe to do sales. But at the end, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not really asking. I'm just like, hey, this is what you need to do. We have a good relationship. This makes sense. It covers everything you want it to. And you obviously need it. So let's get it started right now, right? Like it ain't, it ain't, it ain't complicated and don't have to be either. Okay. So chapter four, closing the deal now. We've learned a lot of awesome techniques to help you get more comfortable, set goals, and learn how to achieve those goals. Because at the end of the day, you're in this to get paid and that doesn't happen until the deal is closed. So let's get that done. Remember how we talked about how you have to always be learning. So let's learn how to close. I've listened to so many books on closing, like Brian Tracy's The Art of Closing a Sale. What's cool is when you're constantly learning, you find yourself in the middle of an appointment and you'll end up applying something you heard or recently learned. It's normally something you never used before and it will work. I'm going to tell you about several situations when I've used closes that are aggressive that most of you will never try. And they've worked on some of the biggest sales ever. But the goal is that you need to be in a constant state of learning. Turn your car into a mobile sales academy. Learn. Knowledge is huge and it can be impactful and it can teach you what you need to do and when you need to do it. You'll end up retaining that knowledge and we'll pull nuggets from what you've learned and use it in your experiences and day-to-day -day happenings. So soak it in. Below are my top three things that must come before you make close a sale. Number one, relationship. Number two, value. Number three, engagement. Relationship. I like for the relationship to be there. That's why the setup and the warm up is so impactful. 
You need to have established and created a friendship with your client. You need to know about them. They need to trust you. You need to get along. You will show them that you actually care. They need to know that you do. That's why the relationship and asking those questions about family, occupation, recreation, and getting into your message form build on the constant progression of the relationship. This starts as soon as you pull up to the house and it ends, well, never. It is a constant progression of relationships and getting to know them. The relationship piece is the one piece most agents forget about. It is super impactful and important when you're trying to close deals. The relationship can honestly sway whether they do business with you or not, just based on relationship they have with you thus far. Value. The next piece is the value. The value has got to be there. They've got to see value in what you're talking about. They, You must build value for the client. I believe in showing benefits, the value in you, the value in the company, and going over all the benefits of why they should do business with you. Go through your presentation, present the benefits, build value in their mind. They need to know that, hey, guess what? The value is there. Explain what your benefits are, such as a price lock, and then it lasts their entire lifetime. They need to know that it builds cash value, pays double for an accident, comes with a local representative, all the things that are important to them. They need to know that they are choosing the best option. You've got to reassure them. You've got to let them know that this is the best option. Value comes from your confidence in everything you're saying and everything you show them. That makes them eventually feel comfortable with making the decision. So just like the relationship piece, the value has got to be there. They have to see the value in everything they're buying. They can like you. But if they like you and the product, they see the value and all the benefits and do business with you, then guess what? You'll have a much easier chance of closing them. Engagement. The final piece here is the engagement piece. This is where I engage with them. The trial closes, the yeses, the assumptive questions, then getting them to say yes. Hey, I'm assuming you like that. Is it important to you? If you had to choose, which of those benefits do you like the most? You want to ask the right questions so they are engaging and a part of the process. If you have a good relationship with them, if they see the value, if you've made them a part of the whole process and they feel engaged, then it's time to close. And when you close, you're going to have a higher closing rate because of all three of those things are involved and it is easier for them to make a decision if the relationship is there, they like you and trust you. They see the value, they love the benefits. The features are great. Everything lines up with what they are wanting. You have a better chance of getting the close if they have been engaged and they're already and they've already said yes 8000 times. This goes back to the encyclopedia close that I learned about in one of my audiobooks. I'm not saying you have to ask 8000 questions, but make sure they are engaged and you're asking the right questions to get them to say yes. With every yes, I mean getting close getting them closer to making a decision. Every engagement piece, every question I ask, I get them to make a decision. I get them closer with each step. That's why I ask questions. And I love the story I shared about the, earlier about the guy in Joplin, Missouri, who didn't know where his policy was. It was the additional question. If you knew where it was, where would it be? I was able to get that person to make a decision. And then that made it easier for them to close, for me to close them later. Closing the sale. Now we've talked about what you need. Let's talk about different types of closing strategies. There are several, but I want to touch on a couple of key ones that I love to use the no callback close, the leap of faith, trial closes, and the three option close. No callback close. I use this if I can't get them to make a decision and they say they want to think about it. I was with an experienced agent several years ago. We were in a home when the prospect didn't want to pull the trigger. Mary said, hey, I need to think about this. This is a big decision. The premium was a big premium. It was like $310 a month. It was a lot. I mean, it was like 300 bucks a month. So the experienced agent looks over at me and I look at him. I'm closer to Mary than my partner. I'm kneeling right beside her. I'm by her recliner. I had just gotten done going over benefits and the options when she said she wanted to think about it. I like to be in the bubble, their space, as close as I can without being too close. This is when she said she wanted to think about it. I said, you know what? I wish we could let you think about it. But unfortunately, we have an office rule. We don't do callbacks. So you have everything you need to make an informed decision today. You need it. You want it. You can afford it. Why don't you just take it? Mary thought for a second. She said, well, if I can't call you back, then I guess I have to take it. And she did. And we got a $300 a month sale just like that. I also had another sale with a no callback close. Same situation. They said they, they need to think about it. I said all the same stuff. And it worked like a charm. 
but this one was worth $505 a month, my biggest final expense sale ever. Sometimes I'll even add the verbiage. You know what? Sometimes people want to think about it and they'll pass away a few months later while thinking about it or a couple of years later. Then their family will see our business card in the fridge and realize we didn't help their loved one make a decision. Then their family is mad and blames us. So rather than getting it into all the lingual ramifications of that, I just want to help you make a decision so that I don't get in trouble because at the end of the day, it's what you need and it's the best thing for you to do something. True? And it works. With the no callback clothes, it's worked on several big sales. I don't like to lose big sales when I'm there. The no callback clothes works. If you apply it, you believe in it and it's aggressive enough, then it'll work. And I believe in you. Leap of faith. I love using the leap of faith trial clothes. It has taken someone who was on the opposite of me. Nothing I was saying was gelling to actually moving them closer in my direction. It's the best. In these situations, I love using the sleep of faith clothes to get someone on the same page. Here's an example. I was with a couple running an appointment years ago and they said, you know what? We're not going to give you our bank account. We're just not going to do it. We had a problem with our bank about 40 years ago, legit 40 years ago. And the couple said, we haven't given our bank information to the city, electrical, sewer, gas, trash, none of that. It doesn't matter. Nobody has it. Nobody has their bank account information and no one takes any money out of our bank account and no one ever will. Wow. Do you think you could overcome that one? I said, Joe and Betty, let's play a little game. I said, let's act like we're in this fairy tale world where everything's perfect. I love you. You love me. We've known each other forever. Whatever option you choose is excellent. It's perfect for you. The price you pay is great. The premium is down to the penny, exactly what you wanted. And the bank allows, and the bank always sends the insurance company the money on the perfect day every month. Again, hypothetical situation, fairy tale world, right? Just play along with me. And there's never a mistake. Whatever day you say for the bank to send it, eh, the money gets sent always on, the th- on that day. It's perfect, excellent, everything's amazing. So if you knew that doing business with me, that everything was going to be incredible because we're in this fairy tale world, you would probably feel more comfortable pulling the trigger on something like that, wouldn't you? And so they said, well, yeah, if everything was perfect, yeah, they are over here. I'm over there. We're far apart. So what did I do? It didn't take eight seconds. It took me about 40 to 50 minutes of being with them and gaining their trust and using phrases like hypothetically, if everything was perfect, like perfect scenarios. Hey, if you had to take a leap of faith from using all these words tracks, I walked out of there with the bank account information. I applied all those things I'm teaching you, especially agreeing, assuming they were going to buy from me and believing that I was going to get the sale more than they believed that they wouldn't buy I believe they were going to give me the bank information more than they believe they wouldn't. If you're ever in a very difficult, very difficult situation, the leap of faith trial close is one I highly suggest trying. Think about it this way. If their confidence level that they won't give you the bank account information is at a six and your confidence level has to be at an eight, your confidence has to be more than theirs for you to make that sell. Your believability and your confidence level are everything if you're going to make these kinds of sales. I don't know, you can. Trial closes. Some trial closes that are super popular and that work for me are things that get yeses. Things like, who's your beneficiary? When the time comes that we need to make sure these things are getting taken care of, who am I going to be delivering a check to? Walk them through everything. You want to create a mental picture in their mind of what their plan will look like. The goal is to get them to make a decision. These little trial closes are little pieces that get you closer to your goal. They will pay off later when you have to ask questions to get them to make decisions. Something like, hey, I'm assuming if everything were to go well, and if it all made sense, and you like it, that you'd end up doing business with me today. I'm assuming that's correct, right? Those little trial closes along the way, get them engaged. Here are some more examples. What's your favorite thing that you've seen so far? What do you like the most about what I've shown you? Those little things, I promise, will pay off. They are trial closes, and you've gotta have little trial closes along the way. You've got to be asking the right questions to get yeses, to get their feedback. Trial closes, if you've done enough, trial closing along the way, the big close won't seem so big. Target, at least 10 trial closes throughout. Another great way to do trial closes is when you are walking them through benefits. You should show at least five benefits and do a trial close before 
each of the benefits and then after each benefit. You'll explain each one, you'll ask a question, you'll receive a yes, and make sure that this is important to them. You want them to answer with a positive decision. Yes, they like it. If it's showing five benefits, you should easily have six trial closes by the time you're done with benefits alone. The three options close. Here, I'm gonna go through some of my favorite, absolute favorite closes, my fa favorite option. One, my favorite one is the three option close. All right, Miss Betty, we talked about those benefits. And the cool thing is I'm gonna show you three options that come with all five of those benefits, especially the price lock, which I know you love. Then go through the options in descending order. $25,000 for 125 a month. $20,000 for 90 or 15,000 for 60. Which of those three do you like the most? Then I'm gonna shut up no matter how long I have to sit there. I'm not going to say a word until they pick an option. 80% of the stats tell us that they're going to choose the one in the middle. But I want to show a range of options, and I don't want to show below 10,000. I love using the three option close because it gets them to make a decision. Build the relationship with proper your prospects. Show them the value in you and the product you're selling. When you believe you'd be doing them a disservice if they didn't buy from you, they can feel it. When you have that kind of confidence and believability, they can feel it. Keep them engaged throughout by doing trial closes all along and then close the deal. Follow these steps and I promise you, you'll see results. End of chapter number four on closing the deal now. Okay, I do wanna add one other piece real quick too on, um, we talked about the three option close. I also, I believe in doing it from largest to smallest in descending order when I'm presenting options and prices, simply because it feels like I'm starting with the best one and that the rest pell in comparison if I do it from biggest to smallest. If I do it the other way and I go smallest to largest, like a lot of you do, by the way, which is incorrect, you go you know, you know, from five to 10 to 15,000 or whatever. If you go from smallest to largest, it feels like you're trying to upsell them where the other way feels like you're starting with the best option, okay? And so it gets them to think a little bit bigger, which is really important when I'm trying to make a sale like this because I want them to think bigger. I want it to go well. Um, and also too, these chapters, like when you pick up the book, zero to six figures on Amazon, these chapters are like not that long. I mean, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pages for, for chapter four, closing the deal now. I mean, the whole book is only 83, pa 83 pages. That's with acknowledgements. Without acknowledgements, it's 78 pages, you know, in chapter eight. So it's not long, but it's an easy read, but it's got super impactful info that as long as you use this and apply it, you will end up making sales that maybe you wouldn't have made before, okay? You may not believe this, but I've made a lot of sales. I'm talking a lot of sales over the years that I did not think I would make, but because I was really engaged, really focused on making sales, really focused on, on really focused in an appointment, in everything someone's saying, and I'm trying to like stay involved, stay engaged, but also to like, make sure that I'm getting some trial closes and getting them to like play along along the way. Um, this stuff works, like you apply it, you get serious and I can guarantee you, you'll end up with some uh, bigger sales that you haven't had, okay? Also, I did wanna make sure I uh, mention this and I, I should have mentioned in the beginning, um, we've just released an ultimate agent contest where I'm gonna pick five agents, I'm gonna fly them to Springfield, then we're gonna jump on a private jet and fly to an undisclosed location. Um, then from there, we're gonna, we're gonna um, make it a whole contest, turn it into a big TV show. I'm gonna fly mentors and trainers in town in, to this undisclosed location. We're all gonna live in a mansion for five or six days. And then we're going to help you sell and make money. And then whoever wins the contest has the most premium across the five days is going to be named the ultimate agent. And then when they're named the ultimate agent, they'll get like 10 grand, they'll get backstage passes at 8%, they'll get a year of coaching with me, they'll get a power player membership, they'll get tickets at 8%, they get a chance to speak on stage about their experience, like a lot. So it's a huge deal, one of the coolest things we've ever done. Um, so make sure you go to ultimateagentcontest.com to get registered for that. We will, we will have a good amount of agents that register. We will be choosing five and I can guarantee you it's gonna be one of the coolest things we've ever done. We're also gonna tie it to 8%. So if you have a ticket to 8% Nation 2022, we're gonna release the episodes leading up to 8% and then the finale, we're gonna actually watch together at the welcome party of 8% um, and tie it to that evening before the conference starts and do a big viewing party and all that. So it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be cool, super excited about it. 
uh, and I want you to be a part of that. So if you're not yet, take a second, register, so that hopefully we can choose you, and hopefully you can be the ultimate agent. Okay, so thanks for playing along with the book. Thanks for grabbing the book. Thanks for listening, and thanks for listening to Rising Star. See you on the next episode. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. One of the best things I ever did was, I actually sent emails to 10 people who I very much trusted. That my dad, um, my grandpa, you know, you look at things like fellow coworkers, previous